Hello all, welcome to Oracle Cloud ERP technical sessions. In this session, we'll try to understand the Oracle Cloud ERP and some foundation of Oracle Cloud as well as comparison of Oracle Cloud ERP with Oracle eBusiness Suite. So Oracle Cloud footprint, nothing but like uh, in which areas Oracle is having cloud functionalities or maybe I can say cloud services. So predominantly there are three areas of cloud generally most of the vendors are providing. So one is software as a service, platform as a service, as well as infrastructure as a service. Navigate to cloud.oracle.com to get more insights into Oracle cloud footprint and their products in the market. So our concentration is on the Oracle cloud ERP, which comes under Oracle SaaS product. Oracle software as a service. And now if you again subdivide or if you get deeper into these particular tools, right? Like uh, the cloud footprint. So in the SaaS portfolio, generally the ERP things which are which comes into picture from Oracle and past portfolio like a SOA services, ICS, VPM, databases, JCS and all these things comes part of past portfolio and IaaS portfolio nothing but infrastructure as a service where they provide hardware services virtualization services operating system services their part they come as part of IaaS portfolio and other things like a right side which which was mentioned they are more of a choices and most of the developers you know like in the market when you say Oracle most of them say that are you working on database so initially like uh, Oracle database was much, much famous and Oracle was known only for databases, but like uh, maybe from past 15 years now, Oracle is not only for databases, it has been, it has been a leader. It is a leader, I can say. It is a leader in one of like uh, in ERP applications and some other other areas also like integration services also. Okay, and coming to the background of Oracle Cloud ERP or you can call it as Oracle Fusion ERP and the name has been changing and sometimes Oracle says it's a fusion ERP. Sometimes they say it's just a cloud ERP. So either way you can consider it as a fusion ERP or a cloud ERP, both are same. Okay. And when it started and you know, like how many years it has been there and what is the market usage of this particular cloud ERP. So if you observe carefully here, the statistic says that the current version is 19 B generally in each year, Oracle releases three patches for every, for every four months, generally it releases, it releases a patch and uh, some of the, ERP products from Oracle or you know like eBusiness Suite, PeopleSoft, Cbell, JD Edwards, they're all on-premise based ERPs and cloud-based ERPs from Oracle or NetSuite as well as the Fusion ERP, the one which we are discussing. And the first release of Fusion ERP was in 2011. So it has been there in the market around you know like uh, eight years and it's been evolving and uh, initially it started with HCM, then it started with finance, then it started with the supply chain, so on and it's been adding now, the Oracle has been adding large number of functionalities and different modules, different technical architectures getting included in this particular area also. So right now we understand that Oracle Cloud ERP started 2011, around eight years in the market and the current release is around, you can consider it as, or release 13, 19B or 19C based on the timeline which we are discussing. And the growth is fantastic and sometimes it is ups and down, but overall the growth of cloud ERP is fantastic. And I said to you like uh, they will have a quarterly updates. Oracle provides it, you know, like uh, unlike the on-premise ERP is where the DBA has to load the patches and they have to apply. It is not like this here. Oracle says you have to apply the patch. This is the timeline. Make sure that make sure that you choose a particular timeline and we'll just update it. So Oracle take case of updating the patch. There is no DBA involvement. As a client, you just need to mention which timeline and just approve and mention, have a discussion with Oracle says that like we are ready for uh, updation of a patch for on this particular, uh, particular day, right? So you have a specific timeline. So we have to be very much careful in this particular area. And few insights into developer from Oracle eBusiness Suite. Not only from Oracle eBusiness Suite, like maybe if you are from PeopleSoft background or Siebel background or JD Edwards or even SAP background, any ERP if you consider, you generally have a RiseW tools. And similar in the cloud ERP also, you have a specific tools, like uh, the same RiseW tools. And you know, like uh, any other ERP, right? You know, like uh, the vendor provides specific set of functionalities, right? The predefined set of functionalities. 
not 100% that will suit your requirements. Always you require some sort of modification or a customization or enhancement kind of thing, right? So how do we go with that, right? That's a general discussion I want to highlight here. So let us say you have a Oracle Cloud ERP and you want to design a pure custom page, right? To just meet your requirements. So there are two choices available here, considering Oracle products only. So one is you can design a solution using the, using the ADF and you have to deploy into JCS SX, okay? And you require a separate license. It's not by default license. In, in e-business suit, let us say if, can, if you're from e-business background, you can design a custom page and you can deploy it within the Oracle e-business suit server. But in the Fusion Cloud, as it is a software as a service model, you will not have access to the application server, right? And the only access you have is the login credit, the login to your ERP, that's it. There is no other access available to you. You can't access the database or even you can't access the application tier related files. So the only way to design any custom pages, you have to design either using ADF or you can use VBCS and design the pages, deploy it, and then link that page to your Oracle Cloud ERP. See, these are not the only option, but generally from considering Oracle platform solutions, I'm just saying this one. You can also design in any other particular Java application or a PHP or a .NET, and you can see still you can link it, but the integration facility, what Oracle provides generally from within Oracle products is quite different from the other products. Okay, can you design a new report in Oracle Cloud ERP? Yes, you can design a report from scratch in the Oracle Cloud ERP. That particular solution is available in the Oracle Cloud. You can customize the seeded one. You can design a report from scratch and, and you can design an outbound extract also. The busting functionality is also available. And can you design a new PL SQL package? No, there is no way you can create any new PL SQL package. I mean to say procedure or function, you cannot create any new component at all. You cannot create any database object at all. Okay, and if you want to build any custom module, the same one, similar to the first one, if you want to build a custom module from scratch, you choose the architecture, it can be any architecture. I am not, I'm not just suggesting you have to go with JCS or VBCS, you can go with any technology and have a link with the Oracle Cloud ERP. But within the Oracle SaaS, you don't have any solution. Oracle provides a different set of products if you want to design custom applications. Okay, these are some insights onto Oracle Cloud ERP. And this is one of the very interesting slide and which is very important. And here, instead of e-business suit, you can consider your other particular ERP which you're working on. If you never worked on any ERP, if you're if you are working, if you're listening to, I mean, if you're uh, new to ERP, maybe you can ignore the e-business suit, what I'm talking about, okay? Just ignore that. Just understand only from the Oracle Cloud footprint. So as I said to you, any ERP solution will have a rise W tools. We call it as reports, interfaces, conversion, extensions, forms, okay? And now here, if you observe, so, so the reports in the e-business suit, we have around three technologies, or I'm, I'm combining RDF as well as XML here. So we have XML publisher, RDF reports in e-business suit, and in cloud ERP, we don't have any RDF reports. What we have is just a BI publisher, or you can call it as OBIA, Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition. We generally call it as BI Publisher or OBI. And technical capabilities, nothing but let us say, if you never worked in BI Publisher, if you want to work in, what programming language you have to know it. The only language you require is SQL. PL SQL is not really required because you cannot create any PL SQL component here, but still there is there are some functionalities where you can write an anonymous block coding to generate the report. So that's the reason I mentioned PL SQL also. So to design a BI Publisher report, you require only two things. SQL as well as PL SQL. And the tool you use it is Microsoft Word BI Publisher plugin. And coming to other technology, the discovery report, which is generally, you know, like a, a business user right kind of a report where you require a minimal technical knowledge. And the cloud ERP, we have something called OTBI. So it's called Oracle Transactional Business Intelligence. There is no programming language involved, just Oracle provides a specific set of knowledge areas. You just need to choose which particular data you want to choose it and navigate it, have a particular filter criteria, and generate it, that's it. Other particular technologies, Hyperion SmartView. This is similar to the FSG finance, financial statement generator reports in the e-business suit. And we have similar convention in the, I mean, similar functionality or a similar tool available in the, Hyper, uh, in the cloud ERP, it is called Hyperion SmartView. And coming to the interfaces and conversion, the concepts of interfaces as well as conversion in any ERP, it is same. Okay, it is generic terminology and coming to cloud ERP specific tools which are available is so one one particular effective tool is called file based data import. 
for each particular module, let us say if you want to upload any data, or I mean to say like if you want to provide, if you want to perform any inbound interface of data into Oracle Cloud ERP, the tool which Oracle provides is file-based data import. So for each module, Oracle provides a particular access XLSM file, Excel-based, Excel-enabled macro file in which user has to provide the data and you have an option to generate the zip file. You just need to upload the zip file, which will have the CSV file content, which is extracted from your XLSM file. And this zip file will get, a, get uploaded into UCM and from there it will load it into interface table. From there it will load into base table. You have a set of process involved. You'll get deeper into FBDI in the next coming sessions. So this FBDI is like a, totally based on a SQL loader logic. Not only just SQL loader, but there are other particular logics involved. But technically, if you compare, FBDI is based on a SQL loader logic plus other Oracle based logics. Coming to the ADFDI, it is just as similar to web ADI in the e-business suite. So nothing but Oracle provides a XLS file which user will enter the data and you just have an option to submit. That's it. Automatically to get into Oracle, Oracle Cloud ERP base tables. That's it. So unlike FBDI, it doesn't need to click on generate and upload the file and again run a separate process. There is no involvement of that. ADFDI generally is preferred for the small data. FBDI is involved for the, it is used for the larger data, okay? Other approach is FBL, file-based import. It is similar to FBDI, but instead of XLSM file, you have a CSV file. It is just as similar as FBDI, but a little bit different approach. For few modules, you don't have FBDI, you have to go with FBL approach, file-based load approach. And other one, so in some, in some scenarios where you don't have, let us say if you want to extract some data, nothing but outbound interface. If you want to design outbound interface, if it was in Oracle eBusiness, so we know that we just generally, there's a design a PL SQL, register a concurrent program, that's it. The solution is a, I mean, that's a solution. But coming to Cloud ERP, we have similar approach. We know that first thing is we cannot have a PL SQL, but what you can do is, what you can do is you can design a SQL, SQL query using BI reports and you can register it as an outbound, you can register it as a ESS job, nothing but concurrent program. And using that, you can like, in, that can be involved from other particular systems via web services, and you can use this as an outbound interface. Okay, so technology is these things, you can use it for a interface approach or a conversion approach, either way, it will work. Of course, like a FBDI, ADFDI, or the inbound interface, right? You're uploading some data into Oracle. Or maybe you can consider it as inbound interface or conversion. Either way, it is same. For outbound interfaces, you have one of the approach what we have is BI reports approach as well as the web service approach. Also, you have it. So web services provides both functionalities, right? You can pro it will it will provide all DML functionalities. So nothing but CRUD, CRUD operations it provides. Create, read, update as well as delete. Delete is generally for only few things because it's an ERP application. It'll have a larger number of what you say like uh, legal things as well as compliances, right? So deletion is generally not preferred. You'll, you'll have a end date or a disabled kind of functionalities which are available. Delete is also there, but we have to use it carefully. Coming to the user interface, nothing but forms, right? So when you navigate your particular ERP solution, what is the way it provides a navigation for you? So 99% of the pages which are designed in the cloud ERP are ADF based pages. And coming to eBusiness, we have combination of OAF as well as Oracle forms. Of course, some set of JSP as well as server Java pages. So the UI which is available in Oracle cloud ERP is ADF. And coming to the other one, workflow. So in Oracle eBusiness suite, it was using Oracle workflow builder. We used to design the workflow particular tool, workflow processes. Here we have to use BPM. And similarly, we have AME in eBusiness suite, and we have we we have AMX here. Coming to the extensions. So extensions, nothing but like if you want to extend the existing business functionality, nothing but you know like uh, if you want to have a conditional logic, enable, disable, or call some particular custom program. So the similar functionalities we have in the cloud, but but again they are limited. We have to be we have to be we have to analyze each and every module for achieving a particular functionality. So the high level information of the extension in the Oracle Cloud ERP is, we call it as page composer, application composer, as well as process composer. And the concept of concurrent program in e-business e suite, it is called as ESS job, enterprise scheduler service in the cloud. Okay, so in the cloud ERP, like uh, most of the functionalities generally you achieve using the web services for the integration purposes. Let us say if you want to upload any data, I mean, I mean to say like for most of the functionalities as we don't have the, what you say like a direct database access, we generally use web services for many of the functionalities. Okay, we'll get deeper into other, other particular next sessions. Yeah, coming to the next slide. So 
as i just just now we discussed about the rise w tools and we are getting a little bit deeper into functionality some set of tools here so the information what we want to discuss here is data migration as well as integration and extensibility functionalities within the oracle oracle cloud erp so inbound integration let us say if you want to send some data into oracle cloud erp what are the approaches we have so we have five approaches right so considering web services i mean i have subdivided here nothing but totally five approaches or you can see, call it as four approaches one is adfdi web service approach fbdi as well as fbl approach so make sure that you know like fbdi will not be available for each and each and every module you have to carefully understand you also need to find out the fbl approach and coming to the outbound approach using the otbi it is a repeated kind of thing but a little bit different here so outbound stuff you can use design a otb or a bi report okay and register as a yes job and the configuration migration right so like uh, when a functional consultant designs some set of some set of configuration the instance how do you migrate there are different set of approaches available so based on the module based on the functionality which you are doing you have to use appropriate stuff right so we have the rapid implementation spreadsheets as well as functional setup manager tools which are available and you know for each particular thing you have a different set of thing like let if you want to migrate the reports you have to, you have a catalog file if you want to have a data extension for flexible you have a fsm stuff so based on your configuration make sure that you use appropriate information and extensibility like uh, as i as i said you we have to use a page composer functionality to enable disable have a conditional logic and you can also write a groovy scripts also yes this is one of the very important slide so what is the technical stack right if you observe carefully here so we have the same thing like this is a three tier architecture and the ui is the adf and the middleware is a fusion middleware and you have a database which is a rtbms of oracle and how do you find out the uh, appropriate erp version which you are working on as i said you oracle releases a quarter release for your particular cloud erp let me navigate to the oracle cloud erp how it looks like so far we just discussed a uh, high level information now this is my cloud erp login i mean the starting page so let me just navigate here and here if you observe you have a different set of themes a rich user interface right and if you just here click on hamburger icon the navigator we generally call it as navigator icon it shows the list of responsibilities or you know like whatever you call it as so you have a different naming convention we'll have a clarity on clarity on this particular naming convention as well as navigation security related stuff in the other coming sessions on high level so like each module or a sub module have a set of hyperlinks this mostly are adf pages whatever you have it here these are all adf pages i can say now yeah so you'll have a larger number of functionalities here let, let me just scroll down here click on more it will show you a few more stuff so based on the user you'll have a different set of responsibilities the major important things for the technical developer specifically you require tools navigation you require configuration navigation okay and in the tools if you observe right let us say if you want to find out if you want to design a report you have to click on reports and analytics if you want to run a ess job you have to click on scheduler process and let us say if you want to find out let us say if you want to if you want to run a particular task you have to go to setup and maintenance right so like uh, you have different set of functionalities like if you want to enable sandbox for a particular page composer application you have to click on sandboxes right so this is high level navigation let me just click on some particular thing like a scheduler process right so it will navigate us to the ess job functionality right now if you want to find out the mod the what do you say like uh, with which user i logged in this is a user fin impl and if you want to find out which version i'm using so click on that click on about this application it may be a 19b or 19c yeah it is 19b and here it clearly tells you on which technology it is based on jdf uh, sorry jdf adf right and this for some naming convention i'm not aware what exactly it is okay yeah now let's get back to our slide yep so if you want to get more deeper understanding of the high level information you can just navigate to these links of course you will find other materials also but these are the high level information okay thank you